All set. Good afternoon, everyone. I wanted to take this opportunity to personally visit the command center for what has been a very serious storm event that wreaked havoc over 11 counties in our state from the southern tier all the way up to the north country on the last 24 hours. And I want to thank our leadership team here as well. I want to thank our county executive, Jason Gardner, who uh, has been through many storms before and COVID and a lot of other uh, disasters. We've had to work closely together. I want to thank him and his team for all they do here, as well as uh, recognizing my team, which is uh, headed up by our Commission of Emergency Services, Jackie Bray, who's very experienced in dealing with storms. We went through a lot of storms this winter, as well as our Commissioner of DOT, uh, Marie Dominguez, as, and are very delighted to be joined by our assembly member, who's always hands-on on the ground, John Lepardo, and our supervisor of the town of Dickinson, uh, Michael Marinaccio. So thank you all for joining us here today. I do want to acknowledge that this was a very serious event, as I said, uh, resulting in traumatic, a dramatic amount of families, homes, businesses, schools, hospitals, at least temporarily displaced and dealing with the lack of power. And this is a very frightening specter, especially think about families with their children. The power goes out in the middle of the night. It's a storm that basically rolled in around 8 p.m. yesterday. Uh, snow pretty much tapered off by mid-morning, uh, 8 or 9 a.m. But in the meantime, th because of the weight of the snow, the tree limbs couldn't withstand the weight of that and countless tree limbs came down, literally bringing down the power lines with them. Most of that event occurred between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m., so people woke up in darkness, the alarms didn't go off, and realized that they were in for uh, perhaps a long haul without having their critical power. Now, we had anticipated this storm, and we had crews on the ground. I want to thank the DOT again for being so hands-on and so ready to deal with this. They always do. And also, uh, the fact that NYSIC, I mean, you think about on a, on a given day here in Broome County, there are about 40 individuals who are part of a, a team they call the Blue Skies team. I believe there's over 700 right now in the region, 400 in this county alone, who are focused 100% on restoring people's power. And that is going to happen in, in various degrees. Right now we had, we had about 350,000 homes without power throughout the event. About 200,000 have been restored. That is very good news. But here in the southern tier, there's still uh, a leg time because of uh, the severity of all the tree limbs coming down, here, hitting hard, harder here than other parts of the state. So right now we have about 40,000 homes still without power here in Broome County, and the crews are very focused on restoring that power. But you also have to realize there's a lot of live power lines on the ground. This is a very dangerous situation, so individuals who are not part of utility crews are not allowed to touch limbs and move them as long as there's electric wires associated with them. So we had our, our parks crews deployed by the state sent over here to help with limbs that are not, not uh, tangled with power lines. So they have been working diligently throughout the day and will be into the evening to remove limbs, uh, branches, trees from the road to open up roadways. At this point, there's only one state road that's closed at this time. So, so it's a, an intense effort and it is a team effort. And I want to thank the local law enforcement, uh, our sheriffs, our police departments, our firefighters who have been responding to e an enormous number of 911 calls, and they're coming in from all over, so this has been a real hands-on effort, but also the, uh, the community of deposit. Uh, once again, hard hit. They have been without power, but also without 911 and emergency services, so the state of New York literally sent our own command center, our emergency operations mobile unit, to help in that community uh, to help them uh, get through what is a very challenging time. So because the temperature is not extremely cold, we think a lot of people will just stay in their homes overnight, but we caution them to be very careful about their heat source. Do not open up your oven and leave it open and think that's a safe way. If you have space heaters, don't leave them unattended. And if you're shoveling snow, this is that heavy, wet snow that can cause heart attacks, so be smart about it. Uh, take smaller scoops. I'm a little bit of a professional on shoveling snow because I'm from Buffalo, so I know what I'm talking about, uh, and I want to make sure that everyone gets through this safely. But unlike some of the earlier storm events we had where I spent a lot of time with uh, uh, these two women who are just incredible, a lot of weekends through this winter, the temperatures often were single digits, zero even below, and we really had a encourage people to go to warming centers. 
Uh, the county executive will talk about the fact that there are warming centers available, but they may not be as critical given that the temperature is going to wave uh, hover just a, just a little bit higher than freezing. So I just want to acknowledge uh, the incredible work that's gone on the ground here. Uh, my gratitude for them. We've been in communication with all the counties affected. Some still have states of emergency. And to work closely with National Grid to, you know, work with them to deploy resources right here where they can be the most of service. So, so at this point, I'll turn it over to uh, Commissioner Bray to talk more about our response. But again, I am so proud of the response and the, and the relationship that we have from the state and county and local governments to help people in these time of, times of need. Uh, we're here with the resources, the expertise, the support for whatever you need, and we're not going anywhere until uh, all the power and all the lights are back on. So thank you very much. Commissioner Bray. Thank you, Governor. Well, I certainly thought we were done with winter, but winter wasn't done with us. Um, I want to thank the Governor uh, for being here and, and thank all of our uh, local employees and state employees for the response so far. Uh, as the Governor said, we've got about 168,000 households that continue to not have power. Um, that's spread over, the majority of those are spread over about 11 counties. Uh, we're going to see power restored largely in Herkimer, Saratoga, and Fulton counties tonight. We're going to see power by midday tomorrow in Essex, Hamilton, and Warren counties. Uh, for Broome, Otsego, Chenago, Delaware, and Tioga counties, which have uh, significant numbers of their residents without power, uh, this is very likely to be a multi-day uh, power outage, and that means that while it's still light out, you need to think about, if you are without power in one of those counties, you need to think about what your plan is, uh, not just for the next couple hours, but for the next uh, day or two. Uh, if your power um, will be restored in those counties by tomorrow, that information should be posted on NYSEG's website tonight, so you can check that information. Uh, but we want you to stay safe. Uh, if you have a generator, we need to remind you, generators should not be inside. They should also not be inside your garage. You want them to be at least 10 feet away uh, from any of your uh, main structures on your property. Uh, as the governor said, uh, your cooking oven is not an appropriate source of heat. We see increases in carbon monoxide poisoning uh, and in house fires during power outages. Please be safe. Um, and please check on your neighbors. Uh, it's important that uh, if you've got vulnerable neighbors, they may also be without power. Uh, invite friends, invite family over if you have power or if you have a generator that's operating safely. Um, right now we've got five counties with um, uh, county level states of emergency, Broome, Chenago, Hamilton, Herkimer, and Otsego. Uh, we also have municipal states of emergency in El Eldicott, Deposit, Frankfurt, and Binghamton. Um, uh, as the governor said, we have been deploying state assets. Uh, we've been tracking the storm since Friday. We've been in touch with all of the counties many times over the past 24 hours, including all of them prior to the arrival of the storm. Uh, we've embedded ourselves with several counties. We're deploying generators, light towers, water, uh, cut and toss crews, crews that can remove uh, trees. Uh, we're helping to turn signals back on. My colleague is going to, uh, traffic signals back on. My colleague will speak to that. Uh, but as the governor said, we will be here uh, until power is restored uh, and everyone is uh, back to uh, normal. And with that, I will introduce Commissioner Marie Therese uh, Dominguez from the Department of Transportation. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I have to say, I thought spring had sprung, but I think it's unsprung for a couple of hours, <laughs> at least for today. Um, it's great to see the forsythia blooming with a pile of snow underneath it. Um, I want to say a quick thank you for the uh, collective efforts, because it's through the collaboration that the governor always espouses with our county and local governments that we're able to do such great work at this, you know, together uh, to respond in times of need. Um, certainly, this storm is something that we started preparing for, uh, as Commissioner Bray said, about 72 hours ago. Uh, for New York State DOT, um, uh, I will tell you that we had already taken the plows off of the plow trucks. Uh, but Monday, uh, our crews uh, were in and hitting it hard, and all of our uh, equipment 
uh, was not only ready to go in response to this storm, but all of our mechanics made sure that they had it all in good working order. So we worked through the night. Uh, all the roads were open uh, this morning, uh, and they're certainly very passable now, water passing. Um, and we turned our attention after the roads were clear to making sure that we could address as many of the uh, power and signal issues that we saw. The number of downed trees, it's a really heavy snow, um, and it's brought down a number of limbs, as the governor articulated. Uh, we've seen a number of traffic lights out in the area. We had it on a high uh, here in Broome County of about, or actually throughout the region and the surrounding counties, of about 65. Um, lights that are out. We've since supplemented some of them with generators uh, so that they're all working. We're down to just a couple that are out. We'll get those up and going as soon as possible. Uh, Governor, while we were standing here, the one remaining uh, state road that was closed is now reopened. Okay, uh, so go. all the roads are reopened and passable. Um, and uh, now we're looking to really make sure that uh, we do as much as we can to help the county uh, and, uh, and the locals here to make sure that everybody gets what they need uh, in terms of response and, uh, and equipment and uh, whatever, you can, whatever we can do to help from the New York State Department of Transportation. Um, but I just wanted to say thanks. Um, please, please, everybody be safe out there. Um, it's not, you know, while we want to jump into spring, uh, clearly the weather's not ready for us to do that yet. So thanks for everybody keeping their eyes on the road. Take care. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Governor Hochul, Commissioner Bray, and Commissioner Dominguez for coming to Broome County today and offering the state's assistance during this weather emergency. I want to thank uh, Donald Lopardo as well in her office. Uh, today is all hands on deck. It started with a phone call from the governor asking what Broome County needed, and we greatly appreciate her assistance and that of the State Division of Homeland Security Emergency Services. Department of Transportation, all the other state agencies that are helping with this. We would not be able to get through this without the state. Huge thank you to our dispatchers, our entire emergency services department, Sheriff's Department, Broom Security, DPW, Highway, all the county personnel who have been involved with today's response. State of emergency re remains in effect for Broom County. Travel ban has been lifted, and we move to a travel advisory. Crews are continuing to work to remove trees and down power lines so we continue to discourage unnecessary travel. If you do need to be out, please use caution. We've got you know, people working around the clock to uh, get those trees off the roads and power restored. In Broome County, still about half of the residents are without power. About 42,000 customers out of the 91,000 or so customers are without power. Power restoration is likely to continue over the next couple days, as Commissioner Bray talked about, we're asking people to be patient. So today, uh, today was really about assessing. Our county is a large county, and also shore, shoring up our critical infrastructure, for example, hospitals and other critical facilities, uh, as well as making roads safe and passable. We're asking everyone to be as patient as possible during this time. NYSEG started off with, just in Broome County, started off with uh, 100 employees early this morning. They're now up to 400 people working to restore power. Um, we talked about deposit. There's widespread power and telephone issues in deposit. I'm going to be going up there right after this to see if there's anything else that they need. We appreciate the state's help with that as well. There's uh, also a curfew in deposit as well from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. And uh, uh, to, there's also a boil water advisory in deposit as well. Uh, established shelters uh, at the deposit fire station, we have a shelter there. And we also have a shelter in the city of Binghamton at Trinity Episcopal Church, 108 Oak Street. Um, residents who need shelter can report to those locations. Additionally, NYSEG is setting up distribution points for dry ice and bottled water. We know a lot of residents have talked about that. Um, we will receive additional information when we have those sites set up with NYSEG. Um, also want to make a point that non-emergency non calls should be directed to 211. Dial 211, that's United Way's uh, team. They're ready to assist any residents with non-emergency issues as possible. And again, we are asking everyone to use caution if you leave your homes. Check on neighbors 
you know, if you're, if, to see if uh, they're safe, if you're able to. You know, this is how we get through emergencies in Broome County. We work with each other. We work from the state all the way down to our neighbors to check on each other and make sure uh, everybody is okay. And again, the last thing I'm gonna say is please be patient. Again, this is not gonna be something that we fix in a couple hours. It's not gonna be something that we fix uh, by the end of tonight. It is a, a multi-day effort. It's gonna take at least 72 hours to get the power restored here in Broome County. And we've got a number of agencies, as, you, as, you, as you've seen, right from the governor all the way down to our parks department, working to make sure the power is restored as soon as possible. Once again, I wanna thank the governor, I wanna thank the commissioners and, and everybody really in this room and, and out there today. Uh, you know, There's gonna be a lot of people out there that won't be with their families tonight. They'll be working uh, in the bitter cold tonight to get the power up and restored. We just ask people for their patience. Thank you. All right. Any questions uh, for the county executive or our commissioners or myself on the issue at hand here? Who's going to answer? Yeah. Uh, so deposit is a place in Broome County that just gets the brunt of, every, you know, the worst of all of our storms, whether it's flooding or, or winter storms. Um, there are very resilient people, but they get the worst of it. So right now there is no electricity in deposit at all. And uh, what's just as bad is that their phone system is down as well. So we're working with the state to bring a satellite uh, communications uh, uh, to, to deposit. I'm going to go out there myself, talk to the mayor, talk to emergency responders. They do have a boil water uh, advisory in progress right now, along with a conserve. They're, they're asking people to conserve water as well. So they have a multitude of issues. They're a small community. They're a resilient community, but they also have a lot of issues, and they're not necessarily, you know, they're, they're in a very rural part of the county. So we're going to make sure whether, you know, whether it's the state assets or county assets that we give them uh, some extra special attention because they have some extra issues that they have more so than even we have throughout, uh, you know, the rest of Broome County. And about how many people are affected by this deposit? Uh, I think there's uh, three or 400 people that live out, out in deposit. But they're all important, and uh, we, we want to, just, just like the rest of the 200,000 people in Broome County, we want to make sure that, you know, they're getting all the help and assistance that they need. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out, and uh, let's get the power back on. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye now.